I want to draw this parallel between complex numbers and irrational numbers. We saw with irrational numbers, we're good at working with irrational numbers, right? So we know we can combine a rational number and an irrational number together, right? Some number of here, some multiple of the square root of anything you like. Good morning. And in the same way, just like with these irrational numbers, we can write complex numbers as this sort of, I call it like this oil and water mixture. Like these guys kind of stay separate, right? So I said something like this. This is a classic way of writing a complex number. By the way, just on the side where you've written this, there's another very frequent way of writing down a complex number, which um, we're going to get onto the reasons why next week. Good morning. Um, but for now, I want to show you what the, um, what the way of writing it is. Instead of using A and B, frequently the other pair of pronumerals we use to indicate pairs of things is um, X and Y. Now, for reasons that will become clear later on, they write the I first, which is like, mm, well, why is that? Well, we'll get to the explanation for it. But um, you'll see these just as frequently, and you can see they mean the same thing. They're just different labels on the real part and the imaginary part. Good morning. Can I also clarify, when I talk about the real part and the imaginary part, Good morning. the real part of Z is A, right? And the imaginary part of Z is B. The imaginary part of Z is not B, I. That's like a minor conventional type of thing. But it's important you get, when people say, like, what's the imaginary part? They mean that number there, how many lots of the imaginary unit you have. Okay, so it's just a B, right? That's actually going to be important later on. Um, and of course, we need to make sure we define the most important part of this, where I is the square root of negative 1. And that's our building block, okay? Now, last time I left you with a bit of a conundrum, right? Um, I said to you, something as simple as arithmetic needs to be, we need to be very careful with it, because um, you can come with dangerous things if you're not careful, okay? So I'm going to show you there are four basic operations in arithmetic, right? So we're going to look through all of them. And um, the reason why I'm drawing this parallel is so that you can see all of the ways we do arithmetic with complex numbers, most of them take their cues from how we do arithmetic with irrational numbers. Okay? So I think the heading you made, the subheading you made last time was addition. Let's start with that because it's the simplest, right? So I'm going to define uh, z equals a plus b i. If you've got more than one complex number flying around your question or problem, um, you'll see two different ways that are most frequent. The latter call them Z1 and Z2, which is funny enough. Uh, subscript 1, subscript 2, Sorry, morning, correction. Or alternatively, the other most frequent thing you'll see is they'll call the other complex number W, okay? I don't know why. So W, I need a different pair of numbers to be the real part and the imaginary part. So I'm just going to arbitrarily call this C plus D, right? So A, B, C, D, they're just any old real numbers, right? That's a real number, that's a real number. All of these constants here are real numbers, okay? All right, now when you add, when you add irrational numbers, right? So if I said to you, don't write this bit, if I said to you, 3 plus root 5, negative 2 plus 4 root 5, and I said, can you add these, please? Right? What would you do with that? Not a rhetorical question. I know it's early, but what would you do with it? Add the like terms. Okay, you look at the like terms and you combine them. In some ways, it's like algebra without the algebra, right? Because you're like, even though root 5 is not an algebraic term, we treat it like one because they can't mix together. Yes? So you're like, Rational parts, irrational parts, and you get your number out, okay? And I'm going to do exactly the same thing here with addition, right? You want to go say? So Z plus W, I'm going to take the real parts, add them, and then I'm going to take the imaginary parts and add them. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go A plus C. There's my real component, right? And then I say, well, here are my imaginary components over here, B plus D and I can factorize out that imaginary unit, okay? So just like with irrational numbers, this is the same, and subtraction is just addition in reverse. So I don't need any fancy new rules for that. Good morning. Okay. So addition, subtraction, so far, looking good. Let's move on. 
Multiplication. Now, for this one, let's actually do an example first rather than deal with like very abstract things and then we'll write out a, um, uh, a rule a bit later on. So for example, I'm going to steal these numbers over here. Okay? Suppose I had uh, 3 plus i and negative 2 plus 4i. If I were multiplying these complex numbers together, we've actually already multiplied some complex numbers together, but last time we did it, they happened to be conjugates. Do you remember that? They were the mysterious roots of x squared plus 2x plus 4, or z squared plus 2z plus 4. So we could take advantage of difference of squares there, right? But I can't do that here. So what am I going to do? Binomial times a binomial. Someone want to give me a suggestion? Yeah. Okay, just the normal rules of expansion. If these guys were any terms I've got. So I'm just going to pair up and I'm going to multiply through. So I'll do 3 times both of these terms. That gives me negative 6 plus 12i. Good morning. And then I've got over here plus, uh, let's have a look here, negative 2i plus 4i squared. What do you think? Does it look all right? Comfortable? Okay, now at this point, I hope you're starting to get comfortable with the idea that i squared, by definition, is negative 1. I'm going to encourage you to write i squared rather than skip that step and go straight to negative 1 until you're a little more comfortable and sort of you know, efficient with these. And then I'm going to evaluate. So looking at this now, looking at this line, just like before, I'm going to combine like terms, right? This multiplication question has become an addition question, right? So what's the real part going to be? Look, it's going to be negative 6 and negative 4, right? Negative 6 minus 4. So that gives me negative 10. And then have a look at your imaginary component. What do you get left at the end? Happy? Um, I could factorize if I wanted to. But in this context, it's somewhat meaningless to factorize that 10 out because the real part and the imaginary part are so different to each other, it makes more sense to keep them separate as we've been doing all this way along. Okay? Now, I'm going to leave it to you to have a go at just writing this out in general terms. If I had any complex number z and any complex number w, what would this, how would the algebra pan out if I actually multiplied these guys together? Okay?